Okay, so first off, let's hope that the situation doesn't ever really happen. But for speech purposes, um, believe that you were diagnosed with a fatal lung disease that would only give you a couple more months to live. So after this, they would have to place you on an organ transplant waiting list. And you pretty much live every single day desperately awaiting something that could determine your survival, but you don't know if you receive it or not. Um, and as you guys can imagine, this list is thousands of people long, as it not only contains people in the United States who need organs, but people around the entire world. Um, there's such a desperate need for organ donors today, um, which is why I want to encourage you to be a hero by registering as an organ donor. In attempts to do so, I will be um, discussing why there's such a high need for organ donors, what we can do to satisfy this need, um, how your choice of becoming an organ donor can benefit others, and what steps you can actually take to classify yourself as an organ donor. Um, so the organ donor, organdonor.gov webpage states that organ donation is the action of providing an organ or organs to transplant into someone on an organ transplant waiting list. Um, an organ donor can be living or as we see in most cases deceased. Um, the actual amount of people who need organs is so much more than the actual amount of people who are registered to donate today. And um, this is why there needs to be more people registering because there isn't a sufficient amount of organs to be dispersed amongst people who need them. Um, so in order to save more lives, there needs to be more organ donors. And I think that the reason why um, not so many people register is because they aren't really informed about the process. So many people think that they aren't able to donate because they aren't fit enough to do so. And this is actually wrong because um, the only uh, illness that will not allow you to donate is having active cancers or having a systematic infection such as HIV, according to mayoclinic.com. Um, also, people think that uh, if you register yourself as an organ donor, you're gonna get like a bunch of calls from doctors saying like, oh, we need you to donate, like there's this person over here who needs your help, and pretty much like bully you into doing it. Um, but I've been an organ donor for like, um, like 11 months already, and I have not received any call like bullying me to like donate already, you know, because my choice was that uh, after um, I pass away, then you could like donate my organs to someone else. And so they're not gonna like, call you guys up and like, try to change your mind about anything. It's your choice and they're gonna follow that. Also, um, people believe that if you're an organ donor, um, if you ever go, like if you're in an emergency, uh, the doctors aren't gonna put enough effort to save you because you're an organ donor. So they're gonna kind of take that, like, oh shoot, like this person's dying. Uh, we're just gonna let them so that we can use their organs for someone else. And that's not true at all. Like a doctor is supposed to save you regardless if you're an organ donor or not. Um, so in addition with this, some people think that just classifying yourself as an organ donor will let you donate your organs um, when you die. But actually, um, uh, when you pass away, the doctor has to give out a form to um, like your parents or uh, someone in your family member and they have to sign it, um, agreeing to um, the process of donating your organs. So if they choose not to sign because they don't support it, then you cannot donate. So that's why it's important to also get your family members involved and support the organ donation process and maybe even get them involved in donating. Um, so your choice of becoming an organ donor can benefit the lives of others in several ways. The liveon.org website highlights that there is an 80 to 90 percent success rate. So that means that 80 to 90 percent of people who undergo these organ transplant surgeries actually live on to live a healthier and longer life like they longed for. And so if you classify yourself as an organ donor, you can maintain this 80 to 90 percent success rate um, for years. Um, and then also, it's important that you guys know that the organ transplant waiting list doesn't really work on a first come, first serve basis. It's kind of like um, they look at your geographic location, your height, your weight, your blood type, um, and then they compare which patient needs it the most. So then that's how someone is matched up with an organ. So um, a lot of people who have um, like minority issues, kind of like uh, they don't have a blood type that's really popular. So, um, like, or something like that, um, then they're not really given as much help as other people. So if everyone registers, then there's going to be a variety of organs to be transplanted to people, which means that everyone 
pretty much gets like equal help in a way. Um, and so to classify yourself as an organ donor, you can go to the DMV, any, like, any of your local DMVs, and then you can fill out a form there. Um, and then register yourself as an organ donor so that the words organ donor appear at the bottom of your driver's license. And then you can also go to the donatelife.org website and there you can fill out a registry form and then you can choose what organs you want to donate. You don't have to donate all of them. Um, and then you can choose you know, when you would want to donate them. And, yeah. and then along with that, on that same page, you can, there's actually uh, like a little card that's pretty much like says what organs you want to donate and stuff like that, your name. And then it's also recommended that you carry that with you wherever you go. So in conclusion, it's very easy to be blind to how important organ donation is. If you, a loved one, um, a family member, a friend, has never been exposed to that type of need. But it is um, good to know that that actually happens everywhere around the world all the time. So it's, it's a real issue. And if each of us have the opportunity to give someone else a longer life, you know, a better, a better life. So it's pretty much in our hands to make the choice of organ donation. Like if if you are an organ donor and like someone like needs it, you can just go and like do it like if you're a match or whatever, you know? Can you just like say like hey I want to donate to this person? Or like do they have to like contact you? Every single organ, right? Like you don't need more kidneys. Yeah. <laughs> Jonathan's waiting patiently to offer his opinion. Thank you all for your interesting questions. Uh, Jonathan, what did you think? Um, the speech had a good attention device. Um, it, was, it was relevant for us and in general, the whole population. Um, had a good preview. You cited your sources throughout the speech. Um, you did use some of your note cards without just as references. Um, you projected your voice well, and all the facts have been well, and your conclusion was pretty good. All right. Yeah, I thought uh, you had an uh, interesting negative visualization to get our attention. The transition to the topic is good. You have a very clear statement of your purpose. There's an excellent preview of where you're going during the presentation. So structurally, everything is in good shape. I do think uh, your citations are pretty good for the most part. Uh, the only things that I think are a little bit weak about the presentation, I think you missed some opportunities to get some emotional investment here. Uh, I've, you know, I'm sorry, I don't like to compare speeches all the time, but sometimes I'm just going to remember things. I've seen this kind of subject done uh, before on numerous occasions, and uh, I can remember people quoting letters written by family members of both the donors and the recipients that were incredibly moving and, you know, really you know, are inspiring sometimes, are heartbreaking at other times. And I think that there's a chance to do stuff like that to, because you're trying to persuade people. And I think you've got a good logical argument that you're presenting here, but don't forget that there's an emotional component to it as well. And getting people to visualize themselves in this situation or imagining how grateful they would be in, in if they were the recipient here, or for example, you know, if you were a, a family member of somebody who donated, getting, you know, the opportunity to know that somebody else benefited from a horrible thing that happened to your family, that's the kind of thing that people will react to. I mean, they'll, and so I think you just kind of missed that opportunity. It's, the rest of the speech, I think, is very solid, all right? I just think you're missing that pathos appeal that's, that's right there in front of you. It's like a big, fat fastball down the middle of the plate and you should be swinging at it uh, as hard as you can because that's an opportunity to really sell this idea. Um, 
the delivery things I think are all very good for the most part except that you you do have that tendency to cross your feet awkwardly that's where your anxiety is coming out in your feet and you're not shifting around a lot but it does look like it's a little unbalanced occasionally all right thank you